rental facelifted Mercedes AMG C63 S. I'm in love with this thing. It's a fact, I'm obsessed. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Sam. Make sure you subscribe for plenty more videos like this one. If you are a returning subscriber, make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss those future videos as well. So, I've had a bit of a chaotic journey here. You join me in the German countryside. And I left my home in London at 4 a.m. today. I flew to Frankfurt and my connecting flight from Frankfurt to Paderborn, where this event is taking place, was canceled. So I then got told to take a train, that train was delayed, I then missed another train, then another train got cancelled, and essentially it's taken me nearly 12 hours to get here. So I'm running very, very late. I haven't had a really a chance to sort of get to grips with really anything about this car, but I was offered a coupe, a saloon, a cabriolet, or an estate. And I've chosen the estate, or the, the wagon, because Ever since I bought my 900 pound Volvo V70 a few weeks ago, I've started to get this kind of like wagon obsession. I never understood them before. I never really liked them. But now I feel like I understand them a bit better and I see the appeal and walking into the Mercedes event, the car that just screamed out at me was this stunning like satin silver and tan interior wagon. So, so cool. We have still got the 4-litre bi-turbo V8 that you find in so many of these Mercs. We're running about 510 horsepower and 700 newton metres of torque in this C63S variant. Uh, the standard C63 runs a little bit less power and a little bit less torque. But it makes this car a complete animal. It pulls so much. It's just this kind of freight train and yes it will slip and slide. It's about 300 degrees right now so my tyres are gripping to the road slightly better than I hoped they would but I have still managed to get a bit of a, a wiggle on when I like. What have they changed? What have they upgraded from the previous C63? Well firstly there's quite a lot of visual upgrades on the outside which I think transform the car make it look a lot sort of more meaty and aggressive and purposeful which I love. They've added a nine-speed gearbox instead of the seven-speed, so the gears just, just keep going. I can't decide whether that's a good thing or not. I mean, it's, it feels about four gears too many, if you ask me, but you rattle through them quite quickly, so it's always pulling. There's always torque, which I guess is good. They've also added the AMG GTR's traction control system, so you can kind of like, you know, change the amount of traction control, the amount of slip and slide that you actually want, rather than on or off. And then finally, they've added something called AMG Dynamics, which is filtered down from Formula One and is harder to notice, but essentially it's all about getting the car around the corners a bit better. It slows or speeds up the outside wheels uh, as you're turning in, slows down the insides. Anyway, it's a bit too complicated for my simple brain. Any regular viewers will know that I'm not that mechanically minded. I, I go for the aesthetics, the emotion, the feeling of cars rather than actually how they work. So yeah, if you're looking for that, head up to Shmi150's channel, he's here as well. And I can guarantee you, he will be having a tech fest. But for me, the biggest transformation and the most impressive transformation for this car is inside. Not only am I obsessed with this particular spec, but I'm gonna pull over and talk you through all the changes in here because it, it's a whole new car in my mind. There's so much to show you on the inside of this car. I think the best way to do it is point of view. So let's jump on in. Oh, it is such a nice place to sit as a driver. First off, look at that as you get in. Lights, grill, just reminds you what you're in. It's so cool. But yes, a lot of this will look familiar to C63 or even C-Class owners, but there'll be a lot of new parts in here. You'll be going, ooh, what's that, what's that? Because 
I think Mercedes have addressed a few concerns of previous C-Class and C63 owners, but also just kind of righted a few wrongs in general. So um, a lot of optional extras on this car. It, this being a press launch, they do really kit the cars out. We've got the Burmeister audio, loads of carbon fiber, loads of carbon fiber, um, sort of various safety options, lane assist, and all these different bits and bobs. Uh, but I want to show you the things that come on all the C63s. Um, so. Uh, most importantly, let's start the car up to begin with. Uh, then you can see there's a start stop there. I've got keyless go. There's the key. Any of you who are interested in Mercedes keys, just going to turn the ignition on for now. Um, digital display in front of us. Uh, big new screen here, all super high def, uh, super lovely to look at. Um, now, I'm not too familiar with the Mercedes operating system. So this whole screen, I can't really tell you if it's any better. I never really liked navigating Mercedes systems. I always found it a bit complicated because I don't get this whole thing the touchpad the scroll like it just weirds me out but it looks nice this new in-car office look at that mercedes me oh this is the new mercedes app um but yeah i mean it, it seems to do everything that you would want it to do but it's just about navigating it for me i never know which way to push things up or down or move around however that's you know i want to focus on the the driver about driving this car and the improvements for the driving experience so now let's actually turn the engine on Ooh, nice little rumble there because you may notice on the steering wheel there are now two manatinos that have been added the whole steering wheel has been redesigned anyway but these are very very important because one criticism from paul wallace uh, supercars of london who owns a c63 coupe is that on a right hand drive model these buttons here which control his entire driving experience never changed over so he would be leaning across the sort of you know main selectors to change his driving modes to choose if he wanted to be in manual gears rather than automatic suspension traction blah blah now it seems like a very subtle thing but i know something that really bugged him so in this car they've added these manatinos which really control your entire driving experience on the right we've got sort of a drive mode select we've got so many different driving modes in this car it's a little outrageous this is brilliant because you can literally flick through as you're driving before any experiences i've had in driving c63s i was honestly i was fiddling down here and i you know i didn't know what i was pushing or pulling and it was all a bit confusing but here it's like so many other cars now just on your steering and I love the way it's got a little screen that sort of changes colors and things so that is genius but even more genius is this Manatino here because you can then delve in deeper and and activate or deactivate certain specific driving characteristics so uh, you might be able to see at the minute we've got uh, automatic gearbox selected and comfort suspension if I hit that button I'm now in manual gears if I hit that button I'm now in sport suspension my seating position is fantastic I'm really nice and low got the heads up display in this model as well and yeah i mean subtle improvements but fantastic ones anyway enough about the front of the car let's jump back there that is my driving position i am six foot two and that is my driving position and look at all the legroom i've got i mean that is fantastic my feet are a little bit trapped because the seat is very low so my feet are a little bit trapped down there but in terms of actual legroom i'm in good shape that seat is quite far back headroom is fantastic as well got loads of space up above me a pretty nice view i wonder if they do the panoramic roof option it's obviously going to add weight and remove a bit of performance but when you're in the station wagon i think you can forgo a little bit of the performance um because i think that would open up lighten up the cabin a bit more but still it's a pretty cool view here this car's got the burmeister special audio so it'd be a banging old party in here but yeah i'm very pleasantly surprised by the amount of space i've got for my legs most importantly for a station wagon we have got the boot now i think this is big but again i'm new to the whole station wagon life firstly i just love these quad amg exhausts and the diffuser and that whole rear end is just mean but this seems like a lot of space how do i i don't know how to sort of you know show off the amount of space that this vehicle has but yeah i mean i think that's pretty big uh, so i'd be very pleased with that i mean all in all i'm very pleased with this car in general i just think it looks the i mean i don't want to swear but it looks incredible oh there's my shadow hello <laughs> um and yeah this just that interior is just such a lovely place to be
road in the nicest environment. And when I say bombing, you are really bombing. So, all these different you know, driving modes that I mentioned, we've got so many to choose from now. Sport, I think, is where you want to live, and then you've got Sport Plus and Race. For the benefit of this video, it's been Sport Plus right now, and I've got traction off, because whilst there is 700 Newton meters of torque, and the car will slip and slide, as I mentioned earlier, it's very grippy today, and this is still a big, heavy car. It's not gonna be some kind of like sporadic F12 TDF that's gonna spit you out across the road. Any slides are quite predictable and manageable. I just love the feel of this thing. I don't know that I've got all of that going on behind me, which is great. But then when I get out of the car, I love the look that it has. And that's my new appreciation for the wagon. Can I think of any negatives? I'm trying to, I'm desperately trying to, and really, for me, I've got to compare this against the Audi RS4 that I drove at the end of last year? I think it was the end of last year rather than the beginning of this year. But yeah, that's the only kind of competitor that I've driven. Now, I'm not a fan of the bigger RS6, and I know a lot of you RS6 fanboys are going to come at me for that, but the RS4 I really liked, and how does this compete? I might prefer it. Do you know what? It's got a little bit more character, and I'm character obsessed, as many of you will know. And the RS4 was great, if not a tiny bit synthetic. <laughs> and that could be the quadro system, I don't know, but these AMG engines are so characterful. They just make you smile. They're kind of lunatic mobiles. And the thing is, now that they've updated the outside and the inside so majorly, it brings it on the level playing field to the RS4. Because let's not forget, Audis just do interiors in a sublime way. Oh, I've got to do one more. Actually, let's do a launch. Let's do a launch before we're very nearly back at the track, which is where the event is being hosted. Oh, bullet train. <laughs> Just as a car to live with, how incredible would this be? You know what? It's weird because, as I said, I think I've said it many times in this video, I never got the whole station wagon thing. But, guys, I'm really falling in love with this car. And as many of you know, I am looking to sell my 718 Cayman S over the summer. And I don't know when the deliveries of this car are expected, Think this could be a contender people and I never thought I'd be saying that but I just think it's an absolute behemoth my head has been turned to quote Love Island my head has been turned a new car has driven into the villa and I'm interested anyway give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video as I said if you're new to the channel make sure to hit subscribe if you're a returning subscriber make sure to keep those notifications on I will catch up with you very very soon come on one last uh, out of corner Traction on. Anyway, bye!